Okay, so we're at the bottom of Gimel Ahmed Aleph. Just in the place here. So we're on 3A3, uh, right at the new paragraph. So in the Gemara, we're about eight lines up from the bottom. Amr of Shmuel Bar Yitzchak. So, so the Mishnah said that uh, Basula, a virgin, gets married on Wednesday. Uh, so Rav Shmuel Bar Yitzchak says, Lo shano takanas Ezra ve'ela. This halacha was only made once Ezra made his decree. She'ein bate dinim kavuin ala b'sheni v'chamishi. Because the base din is only uh, have set meeting times on Monday and Thursday. Aval kodem takanas Ezra she'bate dinim kavuin b'chal yom isha niseis b'chal yom. But before Takana made uh, Ezra made his decree that there was based in Med every day, a uh, woman could get married on every on any day. So Takana's Ezra in the in the seventh chapter of Bavakama talks about a lot of decrees that Ezra made. And one of the decrees that Ezra made was that the based in would meet every Monday and Thursday. So Tosos, there's important Tosos here. Toso says, would Ezra made a Takana that would have made things worse off? Meaning, according to what the Gemara says here, Basin would meet every, every any day. Excuse me, Basin would meet every day. Now, when it says every day, it doesn't mean Shabbos because they don't judge on Shabbos, and it probably doesn't mean Friday either because uh, certain things you couldn't judge on Friday because you would need to sleep on it. For example, a capital case, and you couldn't finish it on Shabbos, so they wouldn't judge it on Friday. Uh, I don't know if this is Midi Raisa, but certainly nowadays. We don't make a, a get without a based in, and uh, the and uh, the halacha books on on that say that we don't write getting on Friday because you're going to be a little bit worried about Shabbos. So in order to not have that on your mind, we don't do getting on Fridays, whatever things things like that. So normally a decree is to make things better. So would Ezra have said, "Oh, but based in meet Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday," and now no, we're not going to have based in meet every day. Does that make sense? That doesn't make sense. So Tosos explains that what happened before uh, before Ezra, excuse me, Rabbeinu Tam says there was never any set meeting time, but they would, and when anyone would need a based in, they would get together a based in any day of the week. So therefore, Ezra, excuse me, so Ezra made a takano that no, based in is always going to sit on Tuesday, on, on uh, Monday and, and Thursday. So in case anyone has a has anything they need the based in for, they will come to based in. So then people didn't have to worry about finding the basin. So that's that's why it didn't mean that they had a set meeting every day of the week before Ezra. They didn't. That's how Rabbeinu Tam explains it. So so Ezra Sakana was that they had a set meeting time every Monday and Thursday. And the Rees answer is uh, there was they didn't have a set meeting place in every in every place. And Ezra made a, Ezra Sakana was that in every city of a certain size, at least at least of a minimum size. The based in had to meet, so it was Ezra's takana made things based in more accessible to people, not less accessible to people. So, if there would have been a based in meeting every day, it doesn't matter what day the basula gets married, because if there was ever a problem, the husband could go to based in the next morning. But once the based in met on a set on Monday and Thursday, we said they should get married on Wednesday. So if there's a problem, the next morning he would go up. Uh, uh, on Thursday morning to Basin. We just we already mentioned last time, but we're going to discuss more. What about, according to this opinion, if Basin is on Tuesday, maybe, you know, get married on Monday. But then we said, well, the problem, is, or actually last time we what we said was, if Basin meets on Monday, let them get married on Sunday. And we answered that the Chacham and made Xera that you have to spend three days of preparing food for the wedding out of respect for the Kala. And the Gemara called that Shaktu, Shin, Huf, Dalad, Vav. They have to be, I don't know, meticulous about it. So even if Basin would meet on a Tuesday, you still wouldn't have the three days because you would have only uh, uh, from after, you couldn't start uh, until after Shabbos. And then there's other problems about that, which we'll see a little bit later on, not today. But, um, but well, nowadays we don't have uh, uh, Basin with powers of what's talking about the, uh, um, it depends how, how long he's been sitting in the freezer. It might be a few weeks. No, but again, the point is, is that we don't have um, testimony about anyone to come. Was she, was, did she commit adultery or was she raped or this or that? So that that doesn't apply anymore.
Um, so the Gemara says, Kodem Takanas Ezra, my Dahava Hava. What what happened before the time of Ezra doesn't relate to us anymore because now we are after the time of Ezra. So what was uh, Rav Shmuel Bar Yitzchak teaching us that uh, before Takanas Ezra you could have gotten married on any on any day? What what's the chiddush? That doesn't apply anymore because the basin doesn't meet every day. So the Gemara says Hachi Kamer. This is what he means. If nowadays we'd have based it, but they didn't that meet on set days. Uh, Every day, like before the Takan of Ezra, uh, a woman could get married any day of the week. We don't have to wait only for Wednesday. So the Gemara asks, "Haba inan shaktu?" But we need the, that the uh, that the fact we need the, the, them to to spend three days preparing for the wedding. So the Gemara says, So we're talking about a case. If they did, then they can get married. Uh, on a different day. So Rashi actually says if they started from before Shabbos, then you they could even get married on uh, Monday or Tuesday. So I guess according to Rashi, it seems the three days don't necessarily have to be consecutive. So now the Gemara says as we turn to Gimel Amid Bays, my Shaktu. So we mentioned before, uh, last time and just now, and I already mentioned it now, but the, now the Gemara is saying, what exactly is this Shakti? What is the thing that we have to be meticulous about that uh, about the three days? Or perhaps the question is, what is the source of this takana? We mentioned that there is a takana, but what is the source of this takana? So the Tanya, we learned in a Brahisam. Why did they say that a virgin get married on the on the fourth day of the week? On Wednesday, because if the the Hassan, the bride, would, excuse me, the groom, would have a complaint that she that she wasn't a virgin, he would go run to the base in the next morning. Uh, and we, we again, we mentioned last week, what's the problem with that? According to Rashi, the problem is um, maybe she was uh, had committed adultery after she received the ring, after the Kedushin. And um, There's one other thing I had to mention about this. I wanted to mention about this. Okay, don't remember what I thought they wanted to say. Um, so he would run to base in the next morning. So then the question is, why doesn't they get? Why can't they get? She get married on Sunday because Monday morning the basin meets. And if there was a problem that he he didn't see the the the, the blood of a basula, he'll run to base in and say. I, maybe she maybe she committed adultery in between the time that I gave her the ring and the and the chuppah time. So the the Brisa says Shaktu Chachamim al Takanos ben al al Takanos benos Yisrael Shia Adam Toreach Besuda Shlosha Yamin Acha B'Shabes V'Sheni B'Shabes U'Shlishi B'Shabes or Vi Konsa. So the Chachamim were diligent or meticulous about the preparations for the daughters of Israel for the for the brides that a person will have to be busy for the Suda for three days, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, and then on Wednesday, they'll get married. 
but from the time of danger and later, we're going to talk about what this danger is in just a few minutes. People had the practice of getting married on Tuesday instead of Wednesday because of the sakana, because of the danger of lomichu bidem chachamim. And the chachamim did not protest. So even though the people weren't keeping the the takana of the chachamim, but the chachamim, I guess they understood why and were not upset with the people. But on Tuesday, excuse me, on Monday, they shouldn't get married. But if there was a forced situation that they had to, it's permitted. And we'll talk about what this, with this forced situation, what, what the onus means. And they'll separate the, the groom from the bride on a Friday night for the first time. So meaning if they were going to consummate the marriage, we don't let them consummate the marriage on Friday night because one of the uh, uh, one of the uh, malachos of Shabbos, one of the 39 categories is we're not allowed to shach. So whether in the Mishkan they used to shach karbanos or because remember the 39 categories, we know that they were all done in, in terms of, of the Mishkan. So some say they couldn't shach the korbanos, but others say, well, Shechting Karbanos was once the Mishkan was built, but what uh, killing did they do in order of uh, to build the Mishkan? So they said they had to kill certain animals to get their their hides, to make the special uh, uh, furs and 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 skins or whatever. So that was one of the malacha. So the malacha of killing. So one of the toldos of that malacha is causing the drawing the drawing of blood. Which would probably would probably include even making a bruise, at least on a durabanan level, even though the blood doesn't come out, but you're causing the blood, and certainly making a, a, a cut on someone where blood would come out uh, is is also prohibited on Shabbos. So because for, uh, for the for the marriage of a virgin bride, uh, when the wedding the marriage would be consummated. Uh, the fact that he's that he's going to cause her to bleed is is a violation of Shabbos. So they can have the first the consummation uh, of the marriage on a Friday night. Okay, so that's the brisa. So now the Gemara says, "My sakana, what is the danger that the brisa was talking about? That because of the danger, people may, may move the weddings to Tuesday instead of Wednesday." No, I go. If the reason was they made a decree that if a basula uh, would get married on a Wednesday would be killed, Nagu they they practiced they the people decided and they took their own initiative and they said okay we're going to get married on Tuesday instead of Wednesday to to, to save the bride. Legamre niakre. If that's the case, then the chachamim should have uprooted their own takana. They say if our takana is going to cause them to get killed, we're stopping our takana. It's not worth it for our takana. In order to to have the girls killed, that's no good. So I'm a rabbi. Rabbi says the Amri, the sakana was the besula hanisis birim harvi tiba lahag mantrila. That a virgin who gets married on a Wednesday has to go. The the uh, the governor or the ruler, or whatever it is, he is gonna have his way with her before the wedding. So. So no virgins will able to be uh, to be get married because they have to go first. So there was a Rashi like this uh, in two weeks ago, Parashan Chaisara, about Rivka. There was a Rashi similar to that uh, there. So so personally, I don't understand. It makes it sound like the like the that the the goyish takana was if the if the wedding took place on a Wednesday. Well, the article says that the the because the Jews got married on Wednesday, that's why the the goyim made the the law specifically for Wednesday. I guess so. For, so for the non-Jews would get married on days other than Wednesday. I don't know. So then the Gemara says, "Hi sakana onasu onasu." How come it says it's a danger? This isn't a danger. It's a case of of force. And now in this context, force means rape. 
uh, in this case, she she doesn't want to be with the governor. So the fact that if he would be with her, it would be considered a case of rape. And she's not doing anything wrong. So the Gemara answers, Because there are some, you know, very tsunua, very uh, modest uh, girls dedicated to the idea of tsunias who would rather themselves be killed uh, and not submit to the governor, so then they will be a sakana of loss of life. So because of that. So the Gemara says, Validra Shulhuda on So why don't you teach them that if they're raped, they're not gonna they don't have to give up their lives if they're if they're being raped. Rashi says it a little different. Rashi says, because the halacha is is that if a, a woman who commits adultery is forbidden to her husband. If she was raped, then she's not forbidden to her husband. But if she's the wife of a Kohen, because Kohanim are not allowed to marry divorced women, uh, if uh, the wife of a Kohen was raped, she becomes prohibited uh, to him because he's a Kohen. But in general, for the vast majority of the population, if a woman would be raped, it's a terrible thing. We, we never want this to happen, but she wouldn't become prohibited to her husband. So she wouldn't have to fight uh, to defend herself and possibly be killed in the process. So the Gemara says, Ika prutsos, because there are some women who are uh, not of such great moral character and they will uh, do something uh, willingly and then claim that it was rape, but really it's not rape. And therefore they would become prohibited to their husbands. Vi kohanos. And there's also wives of kohanim. And for them, uh, even though they were forcibly raped, they will not be prohibit. They will not not be permitted to stay with their uh, wife. It's, excuse me, with their husband. So let me pause here for a second. So at this point, the Gemara mentions kind of as a a side issue, but we get into the idea of the concept of the sugi of Yaharg Valyavor. So the cases of uh, when are you supposed to be killed? rather than violate a mitzvah, or when should you violate a mitzvah to not be killed? So we'll just talk about it for a couple minutes. So in general, we I think we've we've mentioned it here and there, but the Hasek says in Parshas Emmer, uh, um, but he's got, uh, uh, Do not uh, desecrate my name, my holy name. And I shall be sanctified among B'nai Israel. So, um, the you have to sanctify my name. And also there's a pasuk of Achai Baham and Acharemos. You should live by the Torah and not die by the Torah. So the halacha is, in general, if someone says, Eat the chazer or whatever, do whatever avera, I'll kill you. You're supposed to do the avera and not get killed. However, if they tell you to kill someone or to commit adultery with someone, a, a, a forbidden sexual relationship with someone, or to worship a vodazara, the halacha is yavar va, uh, yahar va yavar. You have to let them kill you and you're not allowed to violate. And we, for whatever reason, we call those the cardinal, uh, the three cardinal sins. But then there's a halacha that. If, if they say eat chazer, but there's ten Jews around there who are going to see it, because that's going to be that's a public avera, that falls under the category of you would have to sanctify Hashem's name publicly. So even if it's a minor avera, not one of the the cardinal averas, you're supposed to uh, be killed and not vile and uh, be killed and not do the avera, even though it's one of the minor uh, sins. So. Uh, in regard to this halacha, there's a very so there's a couple. So in the case of they say do this act of sexual immorality or we'll kill you, there's an important halachic distinction between men and women. For a woman, so 
the, uh, the there's a famous Gemara in Sanhedrin that asks about when it's talking about this idea, says that a woman is passive. And in regard to the case of the of of uh, of a sexual sin like this, a woman is being passive. So therefore, uh, if if the woman is the one, if so, if they tell a Jewish man do this act of 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 uh, of sexual uh, a sin or we'll kill you, he has to be killed. But if they say to a woman, we're going to take you and do the sin with you. She doesn't have to give up her life because she's only being passive. And uh, so the Gemara there talks about what about Esther Hamalka? Because there's a the Gemara makes a drasha that Queen Esther, when 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 Mordechai said you have to ask the king right now to save us because maybe this is why you became the queen. So the so she replied, "Hacher avadati avadati." She says, "If I and if I become lost, I become lost." So the Gemara makes a drasha and says that that. Really, Esther was married to to uh, to Mordechai, and she was saying, up until this time, when the king took me, every time he took me was against my will. So I was being passive. But now at this point, I'm willingly going there. So so uh, I'm going to now become forbidden to you because this will be considered an act of adultery. So the question on that is, is that even if she goes there, but still. She's being passive in the actual act. So, so one, so one answer that the Rishonim give, they're actually, yeah, the, the, the Rishonim give, is that because she was being passive. So, the, so the the question they ask is, everyone knew that she was the queen. Now the goyim didn't know that she was Jewish. But the Jews knew, or most of the Jews, or at least par par probably most of the Jews in Shusha knew that she was uh, Mordechai's wife, according to a, to the Gemara, not according to Pshat and the Pesukim, but it's according to the to the Gemara. So one question is, why didn't he just give her a, a get? Why didn't he divorce her before when the king, you know, was about to take her? He should have given her a get out of a safeguard. I'm divorcing you. So Tosfos and Sanhedrin says. Because there a get is a semi-public uh, act, and so if they would have done that, Achashverosh would have something would have gone back to Achashverosh, and this, and it would have been bad. So it was safer to not do the to not give her for Mordechai not to give her a get. So, but uh, Toso since Sanhedrin also says, um, So since everyone knew that she was married, even though no one was in the room with them, with what happened behind closed doors, but if people know that she was married, that should be a public uh, act. So for a public Avera, it's Yaharg Valyavor, even um, even for a minor Avera. And... Uh, So, so, so some Rishonim say no, because still the idea that she's being passive is, is, uh, makes it, she's being passive. So she's not doing the Avera. It's being done with her, but she's not the one doing the Avera. And Rabbeinu Tam has a, has a, an important answer. And he says that if, if it's a, if it's, if a, a if it would be a Jew doing an act of Arios with the, with, or, or, or uh, with the with the with the Jewish woman, then that would be a problem, and and only if it would be fully passive would it be mutter for her. Now it's not mutter for a Jewish man, but when it's a non-Jewish man, Rabbi Tam comes up with a big chiddush that uh, that a non-Jewish man, uh, let's say even if it's not even if it's not uh, a case of, of of rape, let's say it shouldn't happen, but if a, if a Jewish woman uh, okay, so the case of Rabbein, I'll, I'll word it the way Rabbeinu Tam says. Rabbeinu Tam says a woman became, left Yiddishkeit, and then let's say she married a goy, and then she did tshuva, and she left her, her sinful ways and came back to the Jewish community. Can she remarry her original Jewish husband? Because the, the, 
um, here she 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 wasn't raped. She she decided she voluntarily married that guy, so it wouldn't be considered an act of of adultery, and she would not be permitted to be with her husband anymore if if she would do tshuva and, and leave that guy and come back to Judaism. So Rabbeinu Tam has a chiddush that he says no. If it was a um, if it was adultery with a non Jewish man, that does not uh, prohibit her from returning to her husband. Only uh, adultery with the Jewish man would disqualify her from being with her husband, but from a non-Jewish man, she'd be allowed to stay with her husband. So with this Gemara, it certainly was a non-Jewish ruler. So so but I don't think this applies for a Kohen, though. I think that's only for, for, for if the husband is not a Kohen. So at least for most of the cases of if they had this law where the, the non-Jewish governor would have to take every woman before she would get married. So it would be an act of rape and, or, and she would be passive. Those are not necessarily mutually exclusive. They usually go together. So therefore, it's not considered an act of adultery and she would not be prohibited from her husband. But a, a, a Aisha's Kohen, it would still be prohibited. I think even with Rabbeinu Tom's Opinion about that, I have to, I actually don't remember that detail about Rabbeinu Tam. Now, according to this, though, the idea about passivity, what about the following case? What if they tell a person, um, we're going to, you know, we're going to tie you up and we're going to throw you on this pile. Uh, so, I mean, it, un unfortunately, it's not so crazy to conceive, especially with when we... Uh, we're told by people who saw atrocities that Nazis Yom HaShemam did. They say, let's say they'll tie up a Jew and we're going to throw you on a pile of babies to kill the babies. Now, in that case, you're not killing the babies. In that case, you're you're being like a hammer. They're using you. They're using the person as the weapon with which to kill. That's different from saying you kill that guy. Here they're saying we're tying you up. You have no choice. And we're going to drop you on the babies to kill the babies. So in that case, the person is being passive. So if the halacha of um, of of being passive, like in the case where a woman is passively being raped, chas so uh, because she's not actively doing the avera, it's she doesn't have to give up her life. There would be a case like this uh, uh, of this halacha. Uh, of a state that they're doing the act of murder with. Now there's an there is a dazikanum here. Okay, there's a tragic thing that the Dasikanum Balatosos talks about in Parsha's Noah, and that was during the time of Shmat. So this is probably during the Crusades. They were hiding, and if the babies would have cried, the the non-Jews would have known that there were Jews there and killed them. And so one, uh, so one Rav uh, killed the babies to save everyone else, and a different Rav cursed him and said that you're doing a terrible thing. You know, you can't kill them to save us. Which is in general that is a halacha of Yahag Vayavor. The Goyim will come say, Give us so and so, or we're going to kill all of you. The halacha is they're not allowed to give anyone up. We're not allowed to say that one person's, uh, uh, I mean, the, the Gemara actually says the reason for your, that, uh, that, the, that murder is you're not allowed to, you, you'd have to be killed rather than murder someone else is because who says, this is the translation of it. Who says that your blood is redder than anyone else's? So therefore, 
you don't have pre precedence over him. Normally your life takes precedence, but who says that I'm better than him? So if they tell me to kill him or be killed, I have to let myself be killed. Now the Rambam says in in health in the in the Mishnah Torah in the Arachazaka that if someone was supposed to if they said eat Chazer or kill you and it was in private, he was supposed to uh he was supposed to violate the Avera. Do one Avera, but but you're gonna live to do more many more mitzvahs. But what if the guy said let himself be killed and didn't do the Avera? According to the Rambam says in Yad Chazaka that he did a big Avera. Because even though there's a mitzvah to give up your life, Al-Kiddush Hashem, but the the best thing is to be able to be alive, v'chaybahem, to live by the Torah. And this was a case where the Torah said, do that one Avera and and don't give yourself over to be killed. But if you uh, if you gave yourself over to be killed, the Rambam says in Yad HaZaka that you did a, a big Avera. Now the Rambam in the Igeris Taman in the letter to Yemen, uh, I think the situation that he was talking about, if people, they were forcing people to to convert to Islam. So Islam is not a Vodazara. It's obviously not Judaism, but it's monotheistic. So I think the case there was was they was uh, to, to say that uh, that uh, you know Allah is God and and Muhammad is his prophet and some people uh uh allowed themselves to be killed rather than do that. And so they asked the Rambam did they do the right thing? And the Rambam said their neshamas are in the highest place. So even though in the Yad HaZaka, the Rambam seems to say that, you know, maybe the context are a little bit different. It was a possible Avodah Zarah versus just a, you know, a smaller Avera eating Chazer or carrying on Shabbos or something like that. But the Rambam in other places says that even if, if they gave up their life when they shouldn't have, they get a very high reward. And so there are Rishonim who explicitly argue on the Rambam in uh, in the in the Yad HaZaka, and they say that if you want, your you, when the halacha is, you're supposed to violate the Avera, Yavar Ve'ahar, you're supposed to violate the Avera but not be killed. If you chose to be killed, you're allowed to, to make that decision. You're allowed to decide, I'm going to allow myself to be killed and not violate. So the Ari Shonim who say that. So this is a really giant sugya that people could spend weeks on. Ravarn did spend weeks and weeks on uh, when he got to this morning and went through the whole sugya. Um, but that's uh, what I want to say about that over here. Any questions about that or clarifications? Okay, so back in the Gemara, we are about halfway down the page, just over halfway page. And uh, we are on 3B2. Um, about 13 lines from the top in the first column. So the Gemara just said that if there was a decree that the the governor, the non-Jewish governor, that every uh, a, a virgin bride would have to go to the governor before her wedding. So um, we said that there were some Jewish girls who didn't realize that it was against their will, so they weren't so... Uh, they didn't have to be killed over it, or they they didn't have to fight back. So the Gemara says, "Vliakre, vliakre." So why don't we just uh, uproot? Why didn't the Chachamim uproot their takana at all and say that the the girls don't have to get married on Wednesday? Let's just say that that they could get married on any night. So the Gemara says, "Gezera avida." So this gzera of that the Jewish girls' brides have to go to the governor is eventually going to end. It's not going to last forever. And we're not going to uproot the Takana de Rabbanon because of this uh, temporary, as bad as it was, a temporary decree against the Jews. Okay, so the Gemara says, Ihafi. If the the non-Jews only made a decree, uh, their law was only that the a, a, a Jewish virgin 
who was going to be getting married on Wednesday had to go to the governor first. And then the Chachamim, excuse me, and then the people, in order to save uh, the girls, they decided, you know, we know the Chachamim said this, but we're just going to get married on Tuesday instead. Why, why, why was that going to help? Why did, why weren't they worried that the, that the governor was going to come on Tuesday instead to, before the, before the wedding to take the bride on Tuesday? He's going to come on Tuesday also to have relations with the, with the bride. So the Gemara says, because the, the, the governor wasn't necessarily in that particular town. It might've been the regional governor, the county governor or the, the state governor. So because he wasn't sure that there was going to be a wedding on Tuesday, he wasn't necessarily going to come on Tuesday uh, to, to, to uh, have his way with, with, with the bride to be. But on Wednesday, he would come into town Dafka on Wednesdays because he knew when uh, weddings would be there. So because of that situation, the the goyim didn't change their decree. Uh, I mean, that's why getting married on Tuesday helped. Because if they got married on Tuesday, the governor would, would say usually not be there. So there wasn't a problem for the brides. Okay, so... Um, so the Bryce has said, on Tuesday you shouldn't get married, but if it's because of a, a forced situation, an onus, it's permitted to get married on Tuesday. So the Gemara says, my onus. So we explain what the Sakana in the in, in the Bryce was. The Sakana was, if the girls were going to fight back against the governor, they'd get killed. That's a Sakana. So because of that Sakana, and there were reasons why they couldn't t t tell the girls in case there were girls who weren't so tzniyas. And there were uh, uh, girls who were going to be marrying to a Kohen, so it wouldn't help them either way. Uh, so that was the Sakana. So maybe the girls were going to be killed when they were fighting back against the governor. But the Brisa also says that if there was an Ones, so what? So that? So that? So what is Ones? What was this unavoidable thing or a coercion that that said if there was a coercion situation, they would be allowed to get married on a two, on a Monday? So what's this case of Ones? How does Aristotle translate it? An unavoidable circumstance. So, and and again, sometimes the word ones means rape, but they're not in this context. It depends on the context. If it's what we just talked about, meaning the case of the governor having his way with the with the brides. No, so how come the brides have changed its 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 word usage? Before it called it a danger. And now it's only calling it an ones, a forced situation or an unavoidable situation. It must be talking about something else. It can't be talking about the same issue. The su and furthermore, hasam nagu hachamutter. In regard to the sakana, when we were worried that the girls were going to fight back against the governor, it says the people took into their own hands and they said, we're going to decide we're going to have our weddings on Tuesday instead of Wednesday. But here it says, so that was the chachamim didn't say it was mutter, but the chachamim were quiet when people made that decision. Here it says if if there was an ones, a forced situation or an unavoidable uh, situation, it's mutter. It's allowed to get married, which means the Chachamim said that you're okay. So it must be a different case because here the Chachamim actually said it's okay. So what is that case? Amarava the Amri air. That is a case where the the uh, the army or the the general of the army is going to come to the to the city because Sar is an officer and Sav is an army. So uh, an important army officer is going to come to the city. So hey, dummy, what's the situation that uh, that this important military person is coming to the city that would allow them to push a wedding forward to Monday instead of Wednesday? If he's going to come and then go, so just wait another just so just wait to have the the wedding next week. Well either the next week or just after Wednesday. So Rashi just says, push it off to after Wednesday. Excuse me. If he's going to come and stay for a day or two, then Liakiv, let's hold back the wedding till next week. Because next Wednesday, we will be able to have the wedding. So if he's coming and he's going, then Liakiv, just wait till next week and do it on Wednesday. So the Gemara says, Lo tzricha da'asi v'kava begimel, da'asi v'kava. 
because he's coming and he's staying long term. So postponing the wedding to another week isn't going to help because you're going to be there on Wednesday. And I guess... So Rashi says the problem here with the army coming to the city is that if is that they're going to take this all this prepared food. Basically, I guess the way to describe it is that nowadays the armies have a lot of uh, um, logistical units. So logistical units would have mechanics to fix the tanks and gas to refill the tanks and food. To replenish food and 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 weapons and bullets to re to do that. So in this in this in in the time of the Gemara, they didn't have logistics like that. They would come into a city and they would take all the food that's available for themselves. So if the the army like this would come into the city, they are going to take the food. So the problem is 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 that uh, and I I don't know if sometimes they knew in advance. I guess sometimes it's possible that they had an advance warning. The army is going to be coming here. Okay, so now it was also um, because which amendment is it? Is it part of the Second Amendment or is it the Sixth Amendment? I forget which one. One of the Bill of Rights is saying that uh, American citizens, civilians, are never going to have to uh, provide housing to soldiers. It's one of the the second part of the Second Amendment. So the second amendment, the first part is you could have weapons, and the second part is saying you're never going to have to to house the militia or whatever the word is. So, so in those days, the city would come, they would kick people out of their houses and live in those houses and take their food, which for us is sounds a little strange because we have a kind of constitutional uh, protection against it, but that's what happened. So if they knew that the soldiers were going to come on Tuesday, so they would get me. They get the Chachamim said it's mutter to get married on Monday. Uh, and that's okay. So the Gemara asks, the Gimel Mio So if he's coming on Wednesday, why are you pushing the wedding all the way to Monday? Let you get married on Tuesday. So the Gemara says, Asparva di day, So the, the, so the, the unit, the army unit to prepare for him, they come the day before. So because they know he's coming on Wednesday, those people are going to come on Tuesday and already start seizing food in his honor. So on Tuesday, they're already there. So you, the food would already be taken on Tuesday. Therefore, we say the they the Hetiru, the Chachamim said it's mutter to get to get married on Monday because of the unavoidable situation where the if the 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 general or whoever it is is going to come. They're going to take all your food. You're allowed to get married on Monday. The Ebay Seima, and if you want, I'll give you a different answer. What's the the coerced, the forced situation? My machmasa ones. What does this mean? That if it's because of an unavoidable situation, you get married on Monday. Kidetanya, like the following brisa. If your ba- the bread was baked, was baked. And the things that need to be shafted were shafted, the, you know, the animals. The Yeno Mazug and the wine was poured. Because again, they used they used to have a, a thick, powerful, I don't know, thick, but a strong brandy-like thing that they would dilute in order to uh, to make it wine. So if they had had uh, diluted it and ready, so it's ready, it's all ready to drink now. And then what happened? And then the father of the chasan or the mother of the bride die so it's right before the wedding but everything is completely ready for the wedding they baked all the bread they shafted all the animals the wine is all ready you just put the 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 corpse in a side room and you let the chasen and kala go to the chuppah and get married and we turn to uporesh and we allow them to the the chas and the kala to consummate the marriage. Upore uh Shiva Samea Mishta, they finished their Shavabra, they could celebrate the seven days of Shavabrahos. 
the seven days of feasting. And then whichever spouse it was who lost the either the chasan who lost his father or the kala who lost her mother, then they sit shiva. And during those days, Rashi says that that's talking about the 14 days of the of the Sheva Brachos and of the Avelos, who Yashin Ben Hanashin, but he is Shana Ben Hanashin. He has to sleep with the men and she has to sleep with the women. Now, this line means we do not allow them to be together, what we call Yichud. Now, there's three Shittas Rishonim about this. Some, because if you read it literally, it says he's with the men and she's with the women. So, what if he sleep, he stays in a different place with all men? So, he's not with her, right? There's no Yichud for that. So, some Rishonim learn it literally, what we call two Shmiras. He has to be separated from, he has to be with other men, and she has to be with other women. They, we, we, they, we call that two shmiros. Because again, if they can't be together, if you put one of them in the group of, of people, then the, the chasen and the kala aren't together anymore. But some learn it, so some learn this literally, you need two, what we call two se- separations. Some say you only need one. It's that when we say, hu yashin bein hanashim, vihi yashin bein hanashim, the vav of, and she sleeps with women, in a, you know, in a in a, a room with other women, it doesn't mean and, but this is this vav means or. It's one or the other. And some rishonim say that it, it even depends. Uh, some rishonim say that in the daytime they are allowed to be together uh, without anyone else there, but in the nighttime you would need them to each be in a separate place. And we're. The ain and I'll just have to continue with this brisa. So if this happened, where the 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 chassan's father or the bride's mother died, and that we had them do the wedding, and then they finished the seven days of sheva brachos, and then the seven days of of shiva, the ain monin tachshitim min akala kosh loshem yom, and we do not withhold uh, jewelry or accessories from the kala for thirty days. That even though when she, if the kala would be the one who's mourning, she wouldn't normally be allowed to. Uh, be dressed up fancy, but for 30 days, because she just got married, we uh, we let her dress in uh, no, in special nice stuff that normally an, an avel or an avela would not be allowed to wear. And this halacha is specifically for the father of the chasan or the mother of the bride because they don't have anyone else who's able to do what they need to, to help them with. I mean, uh, I guess on a, uh, you know, the husband is, would be, in, the husband would be in charge of the, of the food. I mean, nowadays, I think we mentioned last week, nowadays it's a little backwards. The Kala's family is usually in charge of the catering, but in time of the Gemara, it seemed to be the prerogative of the, of the Hassan to, uh, to, uh, to make the meal. So his, the person who would assist him and advise him would be his father. And the Kala, I guess for the most part, the Kala needed to put on makeup and all this fancy stuff. And who would help her? Her mother. Her father wouldn't help her with that. And the Hassan's mother wouldn't help him with the with the with the shechting and the the wine and all that stuff. So this halacha is specifically for the father of the of the Hassan dying or the mother of the Kala. But the opposite, if the mother of the Kala of if the mother of the Hassan died. We wouldn't do. We wouldn't push off the. We wouldn't allow the wedding to take place. Or if the father of the bride took place, we wouldn't allow the wedding to take place. We'd actually have to postpone the wedding till after probably the shloshim. Uh, So this is actually a machlokas. So Tosos says So there is a Gemara in Moid Cotton that a that a person that that a wit if if someone's a widower, a man whose wife died, he's not allowed to get remarried until it's been 
three regalim, you know, Sukkot, Pesach, Shavuos, three regalim passed since his wife died. But if he doesn't have children, he's allowed to get married right away because he still has to fulfill the mitzvah of Peru or Vu to have children. But if uh, this widower has young children, so he needs uh, another set of hands to help him, he can't raise the kids himself, they're young, then he's allowed to to remarry immediately in order that the kids will be taken uh, care of. So in this case, are you allowed to get married after the Shloshim or do you have to wait? Would he have to, would to, how long do you have to wait? So normally we would say he'd have to wait 30 days, but if he had young children, he's allowed to get married within Shloshim. But again, in this case, we're talking about where a parent dies and not uh, a spouse. So Rabbeinu Tam says that if he doesn't have any children, he could get married even within his own shloshim, meaning let's say, so let's say the a person who's a man whose mother passed away. So he doesn't have children yet, so he didn't fulfill the mitzvah of, of Purvu. He's allowed to get married within his own shloshim, uh, the shloshim for his mother, but as long as Shiva is over, So he would be allowed to get, uh, so you'd have to postpone the wedding. According to Rebbeinu Tam, you could postpone the wedding for a week. But there seems to be some Rishonim who would say you'd have to wait till after Shloshim. Um, lost my place. So it's only because these people who are super important to the wedding died that we would postpone the, that we would let the wedding take place and and postpone the burial. But if these people died, we would get married. We we would wait. What did I just say? So if the Hassan's father or the Kala's mother died we would postpone the burial and let them get married first. And because they got married first, the Avelos doesn't start yet. And we'll say that the Avelos, and not just that the Avelos, we let the wedding take place, we let them have the whole seven days of Sheva Brachos before, before, before Shiva. And obviously it mentioned the problem about having to keep them separated and, and, uh, and other things like that. There's other details. But if someone else is, let's, you know, again, it shouldn't happen, but if the, the Hassan's mother or the Kala's uh, father or a sibling, whatever, if one of that things would happen, they would have to do the, they would postpone the wedding. And according to Rebbeinu Tam, it would depend if it's only after Shiva or do you have to wait till after Shloshim to have the wedding. In those cases, you would have the wedding and, excuse me, you would have the funeral and then you would have to postpone the wedding. So that's a good question. Probably according to this, they probably wait till the next day. Now, most cases for us in, a, in the United States, we usually have a burial the next day. In Eretz Yisrael, in most part, if someone died during the day, they would have the, the funeral even later at night. So, but because of the wedding, you know, probably goes into the night. My guess is that the burial would be waited till the next day, would be postponed till the next day. So Amar Rafram, Amar Rafram Bar Papa Amar Abchista. We're on four A two for those following on the English side. A Rafram Bar Papa sent the name of Abchista. Lo shanu el shanos and maimal gabi basar. When they said if the meat was already shafted, that's only if uh, that's if they also put water on the meat. So 
Rashi says, if you put water on the meat, I get, so again, nowadays, you could refrigerate or freeze meat. In those days, they didn't have that. So if you shocked it, it had to, the, the meat, it had to be used, you know, pretty much right away. So Raphram, our papa was saying that if you, if they put water on the meat, that makes it super perishable. Why? I don't know. But, but if they put water on top of the meat that after the, the animal is shafted and they put water on it, that makes it super perishable. So it would be a big loss if we wouldn't let the wedding take place. But if they didn't put the water on the meat, they should just sell the meat and postpone the wedding, even if it's the father of the chasam or the mother of the kala. Amar Rava, and Rava says, In a big city, even if they did put water on it, there's still enough people who would want it, who would be okay with buying that meat. You would have to sell the meat, and you're not going to take a loss for it because you're you're able to sell it. Amar Papa, Ubikfar, In a small town, even if they didn't put water on it, you can't, there's, you can't sell it. There's not enough of a demand in a small town to buy that quantity of meat or whatever. So in that case, there would even be a loss. So the Ella of Chista, So the law of Rav Chista, that if you put water on the meat, then the wedding has to take place. But if you didn't, the the wedding could be postponed because you could sell it. When when is in the reality would be there be a case where uh, there would be a loss because if you're in a big city, so if you didn't pour the water, you could still sell it. But if you're in a big city, you could even you could even sell it if you put water on it. So what would be a case where his where his statement would have a logic to significance? So Amr Abashi could go masa machaskia demafka mikra umafka mikvar. So a city like the, si the size of Masya Mechasya, that it's not considered a small town, but it's not quite a big city. So in that case, if you poured water on it, then the wedding could go on. But if you didn't pour water on, excuse me, if you didn't pour water on it, you're able to sell it. So you would, I guess you would postpone the wedding. But if you, But if you did pour water on it, uh, the wedding could still take place because you're not able to sell that much meat in the in that size town that quickly. Tani Kavasi de Chista, we have a brisa that uh, agrees with what Rav Chista said. So again, Rav Chista was an Amora. And when the Bryce, the Gemara says something like this, we had a brisa. So a brisa is from Tanaim, which was earlier, but it wasn't codified as part of the Mishnah. So when we have a brisa, we don't know that the brisa is authoritative. If an Amora says something, we have a Brisa that supports it. That's a good thing to straight to say that oh, the the uh, the opinion offered by the Amora, by the Talmudic sage, is a good opinion because we have a Brisa uh, like it. And and conversely, if uh, Amora would say something, we had a Brisa that seems to contradict it. The Amora would have to change his opinion or explain the Brisa is only according to a certain Tana, and he's going according to a different Tana. So Tani Kavasi Rav Chista, we have a brisa that follows Rav Chista. Harei shal yapitu afuyu v'tivcho tavoch v'yeno mazor. V'nasan mayim al gabi basar. If the bread was baked and the meat was all shechted and his wine was all diluted, ready to drink, and and he even they even put the water on top of the meat already. So that's our brisa didn't have it, but this brisa has that extra phrase. They put the water on the meat. Umeis aviv shal chasan o ima shal kala. And then the father of the groom or the mother of the bride dies. They put the, the, the corpse into a room, meaning they postpone the burial. And they let the chasen and the kala go to the chuppah and get married. And they consummate the marriage and they separate. And they have the seven days of Sheva Brachos. And then, they, 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 then the, whichever one needs to sit Shiva will sit, observe Shiva. So in this case, by the way, the rest of the family would sit Shiva right away. It's only the Hassan or the Kala whose Shiva would be postponed. And there's just another case. It's an unusual case, but it happens sometimes uh, where that would happen, where part of the family would sit Shiva on one time and another part of the family would sit Shiva completely other time would be, let's say, after 
where they're pretty sure that a certain man was killed in the in the Twin Towers. So his kids would sit Shiva right away. Siblings, if he had siblings, but his wife wasn't allowed to sit Shiva yet because she was temporarily in Aguna because we have to verify that the husband was really killed. So she wasn't allowed to sit Shiva yet until the Basin would verify with enough certainty that the husband was killed and then she would sit Shiva at a different time. It's an unusual situation, but unfortunately it does happen sometimes. In those days, during the seven days of the Sheva Brachos and the seven days of the Avelas, he sleeps with other men, meaning in a room with other men, and, the, and his wife will sleep with women in a room with other women, so they're not together, the husband and wife. The chain, and similarly, Misha Perso Istonida, if at the wedding, the bride, right before the wedding, the, 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 the bride suddenly became Anita, so now they wouldn't be allowed to to uh, to have to consummate the marriage because she's Tmea, who Yashin Bain Hanashim, Vihi Shana Bain Hanashim. he would stay, he would have to sleep in a room with other men, and she would have to sleep in a room with other women. They can't be together. Bain Monin, Takshita Minakala, Kolamid Yom. And now we we I guess we ended our sidebar about uh Nida, and we were going back to the Avelis. Bain Monin, Takshita Minakala, Kolamid Yom. And we do not withhold any, uh, you know, uh, uh, accessories, uh, uh, ma- um, jewelry, those type of clothes from the kala, even if normally she would be a ve- in a, an, an avela and wouldn't wear these things. But if the first 30 days of marriage, she has to look extra nice for her husband. So she would use all her regular stuff. Benkach or benkach, but for whether for this or whether for that, lo yibo, lo be'er of Shabbos, lo be'er They shouldn't have the uh, consummation of marriage on a Friday night or on a Saturday night. So we will leave it here. The Gemara is going to have spent a lot of time just going through analyzing this brisa that we just uh, learned about the Avelis part, about the Nita part. There's a lot of stuff, so there's a lot more to go. We'd have to go for a long more time if we would keep going, so we'll leave it here. Grand Dalit Amit Aleph, about 10 lines up from the bottom, 4A3 at the top, pretty much. And we will leave it here for next week, God willing.